इट्स द बैटल बिटवीन टू ऑफ द मोस्ट अमेजिंग टैलेंट्स इन द वर्ल्ड ऑफ चेस अली रेजा फिरोजा एंड नौदिर बैक अब्दुल सतर ओ डी फोर नाइट ऑफ सिक्स एंड वी हैव द ट्रम्पाउस की ऑन द बोर्ड वाओ That's a very interesting opening, and Nadir Beg goes for g6. He's not afraid of the double pawns there, but Firuja says, "I'm going to pass on that. I'm going to play knight d2, and try for e4." Nadir Beg nips that idea in the bud with d5, e3, bishop to g7, and c3 played. This is some kind of a torre attack setup, where. you have this triangular setup but the bishop is on g5 if it were on f4 it would be a london system setup and uh, firuja has gone for a line that is not very theoretical in nature but has enough venom to put nodir back under pressure abdul sataro is in tremendous form here because he's just become the world rapid champion this is the world blitz tournament and it remains to be seen how he plays here he goes bishop g4 he has a harmonious position he may want to get his knight to d7 and he's ready to give up his bishop for the knight and ali reza questions him he gives it up knight to f3 knight bd7 and white shot castles so for the time being white's advantage lies in the bishop pair while black's advantage is in very smooth development Ninety four attacking the bishop, he defends it. If black can get a successful e five, that would be nice. Queen to b six, hitting the b two pawn, and Ali Reza defends it with queen c two. There's no need to trade queens as of now with queen b three. He goes queen to c two, which is a good move. And now Nadir Beg is thinking he has two minutes ten seconds. Ali Reza has two minutes forty five seconds. Rook f e eight, clearly angling for the idea of e five. Is that even stoppable? Well, Ali Reza goes c four and e five, played. The confidence with which Nadir Beg makes his moves can often, you know, scare off players. But Firuja is not someone who is going to get scared. He plays d takes e five. The knight takes the pawn. and are we going to see mass exchanges on e5 yes we are bishop takes e5 first he takes with the bishop the knight also takes it rook takes and now we have reached a position where black must recapture with the pawn here so he takes and we have an isolated pawn position but the knight on e4 is tremendously strong also how do you make use of this bishop do you put it on f3 do you put it on d3 firstly Firuja brings his rook to d1. Notice this decision. He could have put his rook on c1. After all, that's the open file. But he realizes that the weakness lies on d5, and he wants to maybe double up over there. Slightly unpleasant position for Black, but nothing more than that. But Nadir Beg has to find ways to set up his pieces. He goes first to rook d8, defends the pawn. and now rook comes up to d4 the other rook can now move to d1 knight goes back to d6 his plan can be to play knight f5 to kick the rook away and firuja goes rook f d1 he has only used a minute on his clock he's playing with great speed knight f5 the rook comes back now notice how wide has beautifully positioned his pieces wants to go to f3 to put more pressure on d5 while nodir back has not been able to find the right setup for his pieces he goes d4 it seems like a pawn sacrifice his point is that if you take here he's going to take with the knight so it's not a pawn sack it's well defended but he misses perhaps firuja's move bishop g4 or does he because right now you cannot take on e3 d8 is hanging and if i can take on f5 and then take on d4 i'm simply a pawn up So what does Nadir Beg do here? It was also possible to push the pawn to g4, but I think Firuja's sense of danger cautioned him against that weakening move. Bishop g4 looks good, and now Nadir Beg does not have too many possibilities. One idea is to just move the rook away. He goes rook to c5, hitting the queen. But this pin still remains. 
So Firuja can simply move his queen away, but where is the question? Do you go to b3? Do you go to d2? Do you go to e2? Many possibilities. I guess if you go to b3, then maybe rook b5 is something you have to contend with. So he goes queen d2. Very solid, very safe, very strong. Because now this is hanging on d8, so you can't take on e3. Next move, I am threatening to take on f5 or I am straight away also threatening to take on d4. With just 30 seconds, Nodirbek plays his rook to c8. But notice now there is a pin here and he seems to have missed it. Firuja goes e4, hitting the knight and all of a sudden the piece is going to be lost. I think that was just a big mistake by Nodirbek. He goes knight d6. But now after bishop takes c8, you can see that Firuja has already got a huge advantage. Knight c4, threatening the queen. And I like how Firuja has calmed himself down, is not speeding up. He knows that he's winning. All that he has to do is play his moves with calmness. And this is exactly what he is doing now. He's making use of the time he has. Queen e2 played. And there are no real threats. You can't take on b2 because there is rook b3. He takes on c8. But now Firuja simply puts his pawn to b3. Knight to a3 takes on d4. Knight b5 is met with rook c4. And that is game over. I think it's time for Nodirbek to resign. He does so. Firuja wins. There was not a big fight there. Mainly because... A Nodirbek could not solve his weakness of the isolated queen pawn, but Firuja played so quick, so confidently and so well.